Well, good morning, Jim Sunderworth here from My Swing. Always look forward to it. Hey, listen, yesterday we were talking about looking forward. We were talking about hope, and that's a great thing. And and so, so today we're going to be kind of uh, thinking about and talking about chapters 15, 16, and 17 of Exodus. Just a, a couple of things. We're going to stay here uh, for a little while in these chapters because... Um, <laughs> it's kind of a, a tough one in one sense because uh, we're going to see what happens when they get on the other side. And um, you re remember now, uh, chapter 15 basically is a song. And uh, we used to sing it all the time. And you probably, if you know it, you, <laughs> you're around my age too. So <laughs> that's okay. Uh, but anyway, it, we used to sing it a long, long time ago. And, and, and you'll recognize it if you sang it with us. You'll recognize this song in chapter 15. Now, but you have to realize, now, now the children of Israel, remember as we look back, they had seen miracles. They'd seen many, many miracles. They had seen uh, God perform uh, the plagues and, and, and God uh, used Moses and Moses would use that rod and the plagues went through and then and then they saw that that um, you know they got freed and as they were being freed people were giving stuff to them and they and they got they got gold and they got all the stuff the miracle of, prepar of, of having provision and then also and in that provision also as we'll find out as we look at these chapters that are ahead they, they gave them also weapons you see that these people didn't have any weapons you know God is so good I don't know about you but God provides everything I mean, when he, look, when God guides, and I've been in the, I've been singing for over 50 years, singing over 50 years, and I have, you know what I've seen? I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen their seed of the righteous begging bread. Never. My mom and dad, they didn't have, they didn't have everything, but boy, they had everything they needed. I guarantee it, because God guided and God provided. Now, here it is, the children of Israel are, as we found out, that they are God's first son. He said that. So he, as he brought them out, and we studied, not a feeble one was there. And when they came out, they were given weapons also, even though they'd never, they had never had never been in a fight. They had worked for seven days a week, slaves, and they hadn't been in a fight, but God provided. So they saw the miracle of provision. They saw the miracle of the plagues. They saw the miracle now of, of being in front of the sea and the, with the with the, the mountains on each side and Pharaoh in the back they watched the miracle of the sea opening up before them I can you imagine seeing that many miracles it was phenomenal and these weren't just little uh, uh, somebody you know prayed and my headache went away no sir these were big miracles seeable miracles feelable miracles and so they get on the other side the sea opens up and Remember what Moses said, you'll never see these enemies again. Well, the reason why is because we know that as the sea opened up and they got all on the other side, they looked and they saw when the Pharaoh's army came in to get them again, they got in the middle of that sea, God allowed those walls to be released and the waters came back over them. Now, I, I got to say this. Some theologians said it wasn't the Red Sea. It wasn't this all this big sea. It, it wasn't. It was, it was called the Reed Sea. It was called, and it was only six inches deep. It wasn't the big sea. There was no real miracle there. Uh, they Because they, they went across in, in six inches of water. Well, that's a bigger miracle yet. It's a bigger, bigger miracle yet. Why would I say that? Because... God drowned the entire army of Pharaoh in six inches of water. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's a bigger miracle yet. Anyway, anyway, there they are. They're on the right side of the sea. They're heading for Canaan land. They look back and their enemies are, is just, uh, they're, they're destroyed. And they begin to sing in chapter 15. And it's, in a, it's a beautiful song. It says, I will sing unto the Lord, for he is triumphed gloriously, the horse and rider thrown into the sea. Read it. I will sing unto the Lord, for he is triumphed gloriously, the horse and rider thrown into the sea. The Lord my God, my strength, my song, has now become my victory. <laughs> the Lord my God, my strength, my song, has now become my victory. The Lord is God, and I will praise him. The Lord is God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is God, and I will praise him. The Lord is God, and I will exalt him. <laughs> what, did you remember that song? Oh, no, we sang it a lot. Miriam, 
Moses' sister came out with a tambourine, and she was an excited singer because they were talking the victory. And we can have it too. You can have it too. So let's sing today. Let's see, if you're going through a tough, tough time, maybe you're not all the way through the, the sea yet, but you start singing anyway. Because um, when these kind of trials come, rejoice. James says, says what? When all divers temptation come, you rejoice. And say, Lord, I'm going to sing my way out of this. Hey, it's time for me to go. God be with you and bless you and give you hope and joy and give you a song.